So now we're at the point where I'm going to remove the frisket to start painting on the horses. So the frisket is all this blue latex type material that I applied to protect the underpainting. I've already removed the frisket to the top one. As you can see, it, see how it stopped all the paint from interfering with the outline. And this turned out pretty well, except there's a spot here that I'm going to have to smooth out. You can see that's, that outline's a little too angular on my horse. So, but you can see down here on the legs, how it did really well and it kept there's a little bleeding on some of the parts of the legs, but overall not too bad. And uh, now I noticed there's a little discoloration from the frisket here. That shouldn't be that big a deal once the paint's applied. So how, how am I going to get rid of this frisket, right? So there's a couple of ways. Some people like to just rub it with their finger so I can just get started. All right, I hold this. Got to rub pretty hard. And you can see how it just kind of rubs. If this was larger area, I could pick it up. I may not be able to do it and pull it off. Another way is to use one of these little handy rub gum rubber uh, pads, uh, which I like to do. I think this it makes... For me, it cleans it up a lot better, so I'm just going to start pulling it off. And you see this makes really, makes it really easy to do. Let's pull that off. Get all the little bits, put my finger on it, see if I feel anything else. And there you go. Got a few little hard edges here, looks like. Uh, this this uh, shadow area, it's not that big a deal. Uh, face looks pretty good. Got a little discoloration on some from some of the gum. But this isn't this isn't a disaster by any means. And let's work on our other little horse. So there we go. Now the white paper is restored. And these lines look pretty good. Looks like I've got a little bit on the leg here. Some little touch-ups. That shouldn't be that big a deal. All right, so now I'm ready to start do the painting on the horses. So, before I get started on my paintings, I want to review exactly how am I doing the lighting uh, for these horses. Where are my light values? Where is the light coming from? Where is the light hitting? Where are the shadows hitting? So, to do that, I'm going to refer back to my tonal drawings. I did some little tonal sketches when I was getting the composition of these uh, paintings put together. Uh, in order to transfer them onto the paper. These are the tonal drawings that I did. So I can have my pattern of how I'm going to make these paintings. And my, my default 
lighting position is for the light to come in from the left and flow to the right. It's just like when you're reading, uh, reading a page. You start from the left and you flow to the right. And I think that's easier for someone who's looking at the painting. I think that's an easier way that their eye goes into the painting. It's easier for them to follow the painting for the most part. But as you can tell, but on this painting, it's going to be a little Mustang on like an out rock. This is going to be like a rocky crop here. Um, but this, I did the, the lighting different. I did the lighting from the right, from the upper right, and it falls down to the left. So it's like my little horse here, he's going into the light. Instead of the light following, like on this sketch, the light follows the horse as it goes. In this sketch, the horse is going into the light. And then I did, and then for the fall, I referred to my default position of the light going of the little horse this little horse, he's going into the light as it's coming from the left and flowing across to the right. So with these tonal sketches, I've already done as part of my homework to start on these paintings. I've already seen that I know I'm going to put my lighter values. I've, I've given a, like a road map of where my lighter values are going to be and where my darker values are going to be. And on the foal, you can see that most, this the foal is going to be mostly darker values. There's going to be a small areas of light, but mostly going to be more shadowy or mid-value areas. The Mustang is going to be more highlighted areas, or my buckskin, I'm sorry, the buckskin is going to be more highlighted areas more daylight highlighted areas. And then the Mustang is going to be a mix, an equal mix of highlighted areas and darkened areas. So the next thing is going to be, okay, which one am I gonna start on first? So I think I'm gonna start on my buckskin first, which will be this horse with the purple background. So what I'm going to do is mix up some colors that I'm going to use and start doing a little planning. Uh, and with watercolors, it, it helps if you can go from, you go from light to dark. So I'm going to put in all my highlight highlighted areas first on the base. And then I'll work myself up to the dark. So you build layers you build the dark layers upon the lighter light layers, you know, leaving built working around where you paint your light areas. So uh, let me mix up some paint and I will be right back. Now that the paint's mixed up, I can get ready to start painting the highlights on my buckskin. So to determine the color of the highlights, I like to paint from the color theory of my highlights being in a cool color and the shadows being in a warm color, as in cool temperature color for highlights and a warm temperature color for shadows, which I know may sound the opposite of the way most people paint, uh, but this is the way I, I studied from an artist I really admire, uh, whose methods I really admire, and that's the way that uh, she paints in her watercolors. And it works, it, or at least it works for me. So, and I work from a limited palette, which means I only use mostly primaries, uh, a warm and cool color of a blue, a red, and a yellow. And I do use a few mixing colors of, uh, of paints gray, a uh, and a green mixing color, and uh, and then an orange mixing color. So I'm going to start. So to start with my highlights on this buckskin, I'm going to mix two cool colors to come up with a nice coolish highlight color. 
And my reference picture, I have a reference picture for this one. And this is my reference picture. And so I can see I need to use a really pale, uh, like peach color, like a light, 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 light peach color for these highlights. But to distinguish the highlighted areas easier for me, I print the cut. I print this picture in black and white, and in black and white, it's easier for me to see exactly where the highlighted color needs to go, such as on. We got our forehead that falls across the shadow, crawls, falls across uh, this stifle area, up into the flank area, across the forearm. You see here and in this pectoral muscle, it oops, it catches a highlight. My brush is wet there. Um, so this gives me a, a strong indication of where my highlighted values are much better than the color picture does. So here's the color reference. And I, the, I use the color reference gets gets me the color the, or the hue the, of the color I need to use. But the black and white picture distinguishes the actual value, where the highlighted values actually go on the horse. So, I'm, now these I'll start with wet on dry. Now remember, the background was done when I did a wet wash, then I laid in wet color. So now I'm just going to use wet color on dry paper. So, let me load up my brush. Hold on, let's see. I'm going to need to get two brushes. One to lay and one to spread. So, let's start here. Let me just drop in where my highlighted colors are going to be. So, I'm going to use one to lay in the color and then just a clean damp brush to spread the color so now we're going to do our shoulder now another way you can do if you just don't want to pick and choose and i've done this before too is i've just washed the whole area in the highlighted color and then layered everything on top of the highlighted color now I've noticed when I pulled the frisket off it added some discoloration I probably left the frisket on too long because I because when I paint, my time for painting uh, can be real herky-jerky. I don't have a set time for painting every day because some of us have to work a day job. And we have other responsibilities or physical ailments that we have to address. You can see I'm using two two paint brushes. One lays in the color. And one in the clear. And this this black one just has it's just a damp brush. There's no color on it. So you can see that it's going to make my highlights 
for the buckskin color. And I may soften the edge just a bit with the clear. Let's see, on this outside, the gasket here, that's a little highlight there. So, a little bit there. Okay, so that should get. That's got the majors done. And on these little paintings like this, it goes quick. And you don't, one of the fun things about painting these little ASOs is that you don't have to mix up a whole bunch of color to, to get, uh, to make the painting come alive. If this was a lot bigger painting, then I'd have to mix up a lot more color. Uh, but I can only, I only have to mix up maybe a teaspoon or two of color and I'm good. So now I've got my highlights on the buckskin horse color. So now I'm, I'm going to mix up highlights for the black. The black will be a little easier. Of course, the black is going to be uh, our, my tail here. And, of course, the black on the lower legs or the black points on the lower legs. And the black highlights, black highlights and black hair is normally a blue it's going to be a bluish or a purplish color. Since I have purplish in the background, I'm going to make this more of a blue highlight, which is going to be real simple. I won't mix up any extra. I won't mix up a combination of colors. I will just, I think I'm going to grab one of my mixing colors for that. And... Hold on just a second while I get that done. Okay, I think I'm just going to put just like a little teeny bit of, I think I'll use a light, light, light wash of thalo blue for my black highlights. So if I follow my reference point, point you can see I've kind of, I've drawn out. So I'm just going to put, build a layer of just a light thalo blue wash here. And remember this was, this will dry lighter and I can always lift it if I think it's too dark. So the sun's coming in, it's coming this way, it's going to hit the highlights of the lifted tail here, and then this area will be in the shadow area. That's my tail. Now we'll come down here to this back leg, and this lifted cannon bone, this one is in sunlight, it's in the highlight, that part of the foot is, and then this back, other back leg back there, the inside of this knee and then this front leg is mostly shadow and then I think I'm going to do a little bit up here on the muzzle my palette is set over here to my left on another desk because I don't have room. Actually, that's going to be in the shadow area, so I don't want that too cool bluey. We're going to put more cool, cool bluey over here. I just need a... And then the upper lip here. I just need a tint of color for that. Okay, so I've got my black highlights. I've got my buckskin color highlights. Okay. All right, I think that's good there.
So I think for my eye, I'm just going to add a nice warm brown. Actually, it's more like a burnt sienna color uh, that I've mixed up already. I already got mixed up. Just gonna drop that in on my eye. And then a little bit in the nostrils. And then I'm gonna drop in just a bit on the inside of those ears. A little definement there. Okay. Alright, now. I'm going to let that dry a little bit before I go on to mixing up my next layer of colors, which are going to be, now I'm going to start in, now I'll, I'll start in on the next lightest values, which are going to be probably more of what I call, or what's called the local color, like what the actual color of the horse is, an actual Buck's Guinea color. Um, just wanted to point it out, point out on one more thing. Uh, when I took the frisket off, I did some more erasing with just a plain eraser. And then I redrew the outline a bit more in pencil. And I used a soft, a softer lead pencil so I could see the lines a little better. Sometimes that's great, sometimes not so great. Uh, sometimes it's better to use a little harder lead which leaves a lighter trace uh, or a lighter pencil mark. But, you know, you figure these, these things out as you go. Okay. So, let me check to see. And I used the back of my finger. I try not to use my fingertips because my fingertips are very... Um, thickened and calloused and so they're not quite as sensitive to temperature but if I use the back of my finger like this if I feel any cool areas then I know the paint has not quite dried yet like the face is not quite dry but my body area has it's it's this all feels pretty dry let me point out something else here. You can see under the leg, see where I pulled the frisket off? And you can see that part there. I had to redraw the belly and where the stifle joint come together. And see how this is, these have led some kind of hard, harsh lines. You know what, before I go any further, I'm going to correct those. So let me show you how I do that. So I have a little brush. This is a synthetic. Uh, let's see, what is this? It says, this is a Da Vinci one with a flat edge. This is a little, little stiffer synthetic bristle. And it's really good for, it'll be really good for lifting these lines and softening up, up a bit. So I'm just going to wet this in clear water. Not too much water. And I'm going to come below the line, start wetting it, and then just kind of carefully start scrubbing up. And if that doesn't work, start scrubbing down. I just want to be careful. I just want to soften that harshness there best I can. And I may switch to another brush. This one may not be small enough. I want to be careful about not scrubbing too hard 
because then that's going to end that I'll start scrubbing with the start messing with the fibers on my paper okay let's dot that a bit all right that softens that that gets that nice and soft now for this area I'm going to switch to a smaller let's see something that's a little smaller like this you can see this is a little teeny little teeny little head on it this is called a spotter what's this this says connoisseur spotter okay i don't want to add too much water start below and then work up Just want to soften that so that it's not so glaring. This is just a personal preference. Somebody else that may not. You know what? You know what? I don't think this brush was completely clean. Oop, that's my bad. Well, let's fix that. Okay, and once this is all dried, then I can always come back with my background color and just touch up these areas here that got a little uh, rough. Kind of smooth these horses so my horses don't look like... So this horse doesn't look like he's got all these lumps and bumps on his legs. Let me fix up this other line over here there see how that softens there there, that's not so glaring. Now let me work on the inside of that one a bit. Like I said, if you're doing your own painting and that doesn't bother you, then you don't have to do this. But I just don't want that distracting me because I know it's going to distract me. And again, I want to be careful. I don't, I'm not taking out too much of this rag on the from the paper. Okay. And I think I'm going to try to move on that a bit. Most of my brushes are a natural bristle. They're gonna be usually a sable, but these synthetic bristles are great for doing this type of correcting, and they're also great when you wanna add texture and brush marks into the painting. Your synthetic bristles are really great for doing that too. Okay. All right, we can do the body. I won't do the legs because I just wetted all this paper here. So this will have to dry before I do anything with the legs. But I can work up on my body and my face now, too. All right, so I'm going to mix up my buckskin horse color. So if I look at this, look at my reference picture, and I look just past where the highlighted areas are. And if I go according to this picture, I can see that my local color, which is what's going to go on the belly, most of the shoulder, on top of the hip, mostly on the forearm, and we go here on our face, 
the ear. This is going to be a light. This is going to be a, it's going to be a peach color, but it'll be more of a uh have a tanny peach color. So what's my color temperature going to be for that? Is it going to be a warm? Is it going to be a cool? Is it going to be a mix? It's probably going to be a mix of colors. And probably a mix toward cool. I bet. I bet that's what it's going to be. This is going to be more of a coolish. Whereas this in the shadow is going to be more of a warmy tan. And this will be a cooly tan. If that makes any sense. But that's what I'm going with. So I'm going to... Uh, let me pause it here, mix up my colors, and I'll come back and uh, start laying in those colors. <laughs> 